Nigel Slater. For me, food should be fun, not intimidating. And by far the best part of cooking is creating recipes, trying out new flavours and textures. It's about being brave. Experiment a little. I'd like to encourage you to explore some untrodden territory by putting together ingredients that don't necessarily feel right together. I'll create a week's worth of recipes where opposites attract, whether sweet and sour, hot and cold, or spicy and cool. It's about taking a few risks to tantalise your taste buds. Sometimes you just need to eat something that will make your taste buds sing. The most famous example of opposites working together, I think, is sour and sweet. And I knew it worked from a very early age. We used to go down to the bottom of the garden, nick a stalk of my dad's rhubarb, and then stick it in the sugar bag. So I got the sour and the sweet, and I knew there was something very, very interesting about it. It works in so many ways. I like to use it for a simple supper. I make a sort of dressing, a sort of basting liquid, if you like, with lemons, and then I sweeten it either with honey or sometimes with maple syrup. So for supper tonight, it's sticky, sweet and sour chicken with lemon and honey. Squeeze the juice from about four lemons. Add a few crushed black peppercorns and a healthy dollop of clear honey. Runny honey works best for this. What happens is that it caramelizes on the heat of the roasting tin. It goes all sticky. You don't have to use mustard, but it gives an extra zing. And if you like garlic, it's worth popping in a few crushed cloves. Garlic drives me mad and I'm trying to crush it, so I put salt on it to give it some grip. I'm using thighs because I like cooking chicken with the bone in. You could use chicken breast, but I do think it works better with brown meat. These are quite big flavours. Pour the mixture over the chicken. The longer you leave it to marinate, the better. You can cook these on a barbecue, but for a quick supper, add a sprinkle of salt and put into a hot oven for around 45 minutes. It's worth turning the pieces halfway so they go sticky all over. I could put that on the table, I'd be very happy with it. But there's another sort of lemon that I love using, and it's preserved lemons. They're little lemons that have been stored in brine. And they're slightly more mellow than a fresh lemon, but they still have a delightful sourness. What you need with these is the outside skin. You don't really need the soggy bit in the middle, and I just tend to get rid of it. Any Middle Eastern store will have these. I want something salty with the sharpness of those lemons. I'm gonna use some green olives. There's certain foods that make your mouth tingle it truly makes you feel alive. And very often, that's when something sour and salty gets into your mouth at the same time. And for me, lemons and olives do just that. It's food that shakes the senses. Fresh green herbs add a vibrant color to the mix. Wherever I use lemons, I tend to use parsley. They are very happy bedmates. I adore sticky food. Food that makes you lick your lips and lick your fingers. And it doesn't come stickier than this. Pieces of chicken, just the right side of being toasted with lemon, lots of honey. 
and then a flash of bright olives, lemons and parsley. You know, I'd be happy enough to eat this on a plate with a knife and fork, but I'd be much, much happier to eat it with my fingers. Mmm. It's sticky and it's hot, and it's sour and it's sweet. Just everything all happening together in the mouth. By changing the amount of honey or lemon, you can make this dish as sweet or as sour as you like. To be honest, I vary it every time I cook. I love growing my own veg. And I know it may sound a bit odd, but you can get very attached to what you grow. As I see my produce developing, I just can't help but think about how I'm going to cook it. No matter how small my garden is, I have to have an apple tree. There's something about going out and picking your own apples that's appealed to me ever since I was a kid. And I value them in salads. I love them baked and in tarts. But I particularly like them with pork. Sometimes I just chuck them in around the roast, just as you would a parsnip in winter or a roast potato. As soon as these pears are ready, because they're going to be so juicy and so sweet, I'll partner them with something quite salty. You know, they're fantastic with a bit of parmesan. And it sounds strange, parmesan and pears, but sometimes opposites just work. I mean, sometimes you just have to think as far apart as you possibly can, such as something very hot and spicy, with something really cool. Vivimos en una era sin precedentes. Three, two, one.